All right, we got one here. Customer says they hear the fan going, but the compressor is not starting. I think he meant he hears the blower fan running because we have no action out here at all. So let's get this cover off and see what's going on. All right, well, I just opened the unit up and we have seven flashes on this red indicator light. I'm sorry, eight flashes. Eight flashes corresponds to compressor is not pumping <laughs> okay all right let me show you guys something here so um, i have it off right now and disconnected but when i had it on the this led here was flashing twice a second now train makes it a little, a little more complicated than it's supposed to be but um according to this chart if it's if you're spot flashing two flashes per second it's fault a low delta t an operative compressor loss of charge open ambient sensor shorted coil sensor so the first thing i wanted to do was to check continuity through my pressure switches which is if you look at here our pressure switches are here uh, low pressure cut out high pressure cut out now you got to follow wires, but this wire nut here, and it eventually comes from our, our board on this wire here. So this is a good starting spot here. The yellow and black comes over, up, and then goes to our defrost control here. And it goes to this plug here. So that's our wire right there, yellow and black. So I got one wire there. And then our other one, after it makes the loop, after it leaves, after it, it leaves here, yellow and black here, it comes down, around, it hits this wire nut here like we spoke about, goes up, goes through this pressure switch, out of this pressure switch, through this pressure switch, out of this pressure switch, then it comes, hmm, Let's take you for the ride. It comes down here, yellow and red, and then goes here. This right here is the compressor contactor. So that's what actually initiates our contactor, which is our cooling call. So what I did was I'm testing continuity between white and black here, which is where it leaves our, our board at and it travels to here this wire here and as you can see i have no continuity so one of my pressure switches is open i don't know if it's the high pressure or the low pressure yet but we're about to find out all right so the most obvious thing you want to check when you have a pressure switch open when you have the low pressure and high pressure daisy chain together do you have refrigerant in the system is the switch doing its job so I just quickly hooked up the analog gauges and we are almost at 200 PSI of standing pressure. So we know we have plenty of refrigerant in the system at least to satisfy the pressure switch. So we'll look further than are we just out of charge. Okay, so on our low pressure switch, we have a yellow wire and then we have an orange and yellow wire. So we're gonna check that next. All right, we have our yellow wire here and then our orange and yellow wire connected. Let's check for continuity. And we have continuity there. So our low pressure switch is good. All right, so next is our high pressure cutout switch, which has a yellow and red, yellow and red leads. So two yellow and red leads. So that is right here. Yellow and red, yellow and red. All right, let's check for continuity there. All right, no continuity through our high pressure cutout switch. So that means our high pressure cutout switch is bad. Unless we are in a high pressure cutout event, which I don't think we are, but we will check just to be on the safe side with the unit not running we will check our head pressure. Okay, so here is our standing pressures. We have just under 200, I'd say about 190, 190, this is 410A. 
and we still have zero continuity through our high pressure cutout switch. So it's safe to say our high pressure cutout switch is faulty. But we're gonna open up the cover of the fan guard and look in there and see what we can see. Maybe if we have a broken wire or something, we can repair that. Uh, chances are it's a defective switch though. All right. Here is our high pressure cutout switch here. The wires seem intact. And honestly, that doesn't look like a factory braze job. I guess it could be. I'm wondering if this switch has been replaced once before. I'm trying to look and see if we see any nicks in the wire or anything and cuts. See if it melted anywhere. see anything so I'm thinking chances are we just have a bad switch here let's look a little bit deeper into the wires before we call it a bad switch let me show you what I did here so I cut the wiring to the high pressure cutout switch as close as I felt comfortable with just in case I had to splice them back on and I cut them and then spun them together just like that and we're going to come over to our meter at our connection side in our control panel. We have them, we still have our meter leads hooked back up to the other end of the pressure switch wires. And we're going to go back to continuity here. We're going to see. All right, now we have continuity. So that tells us the wiring is good. The switch is bad. All right, so we are going to need a high pressure cutout switch. All right, uh, that, a high pressure cutout switch is a safety device installed to protect the system in case of a high pressure event. It will shut the unit off and not damage the compressor. So I have this one on the truck, but it opens at 410 PSI. So this is really designed for an R22 system because 410A can reach 410 PSI under normal operating conditions. So it would not be wise to put this on there uh, because it might trip before I get back. So unfortunately, I might have to bypass that switch until I can get back here with the right one. I don't like having to do that, but I'm going to look in my truck a little bit further, see if I have anything else that might work. All right, guys. So unfortunately, I did not have a high pressure cutout switch on the truck that I could use until we get the correct parts in. So I had to leave that bypass. Now I want to check the system out to make sure it won't ever go into a high pressure event until I get back with the, the right parts. Looks like we're hanging right around 245 on our head pressure. So I probably could have used that 410 cutout switch, but I just wanted to be on the safe side and not use it because a lot of 410A systems can run the higher 300s into 400, and I didn't want to have a nuisance call of that thing tripping until we get back here with the right switch. So um, I'm just gonna make sure the fan is running properly. I'm gonna make sure the head pressure is down so we don't have a high pressure event until we get the correct part in. Go ahead and do an underload cap test. So we're at 393 volts on our capacitor. And we're going to test this orange wire here, which is going to our start winding. And we are at 4.3 amps. And we are a 30 slash 7.5 microfarad capacitor. All right, so let's put that into our uh, HVAC school app and see if we're good. All right, according to our under load uh, capacitor test, that capacitor is good on the compressor side. So let's check it on the fan side now, because that's the side that really matters until we get back. All right, we have 341 volts between common and fan. And 
now we're going to test the start winding on the fan which is this brown wire and we have we're going to call that one amp Okay, so it turns out our fan side is good too. So we're gonna pack this one up. We're gonna make sure our, we're making cool air and we are going to order that pressure switch and get it here as quick as possible. Right, we're gonna record the outdoor unit information here. This unit's only for 2019, so this part should be under warranty. So at least it'll save the customer a little bit of money, but there's still going to be a lot of labor involved and refrigerant, unless I can save the refrigerant I take out of there, which I don't see why I wouldn't be able to. So, mostly it's just going to be labor for the customer and the dryer. All right, guys, that's going to be it for that call. Um, had to leave that pressure switch bypassed. Um, I'm not too crazy about it, but uh, it is what it is. Uh, I had to get the cooling back on for that customer. We're gonna order a new pressure switch. Um, the unit is under warranty, so at least that will be covered. But, um, so yeah, we're gonna get a new pressure switch and go back and put it on. So uh, keep an eye out for the sequel to this um, and me putting that pressure switch on. So that's gonna be it for this one. Please like the video and subscribe for more content like this. And uh, I'm off to the next one.